My name is Rolf Drexler and I'm a professor at the University of Bremen and a director at DFKI and I'm the spokesman of the graduate school system design. I'm Ulrich Kühne. I'm the scientific coordinator of the school. I'm available as a mentor for the PhD students if they need help in their research or if they need help in their relationship to their advisors. The Graduate School System Design is a structured PhD program for students in computer science. It is funded by the German Excellence Initiative that started the University of Bremen in November 2012. And the overall idea is to uh, promote young students on their way to a scientific career. This graduate school has three partners, namely the University of Bremen, the DFKI and DLR. For the students, this has the big advantage that they can, on the one hand side, get the basic research ideas at the university, but can also look at application fields than at the respective research institute. At DFKI, this is the field of robotics and system design, and for space transportation and aeronautics at DLR. Space systems must be maintenance-free and they have to cope with extreme environmental conditions during their journey. Because of these reasons, their development requires a high effort. For instance, they have to withstand excessive vibrations during launch, so they have to be tested excessively on a shaker before a mission. When they arrive in space, they are confronted with temperatures from minus 100 to plus 120 centigrades. In this case, a solar simulation chamber can be used to test their thermal endurance. Another issue is the high level of radiation in space, which causes faulty data in computers on board of a space system. In my research, I am investigating approaches to handle such faults. For the PhD students, it's a clear advantage that we have a quite intensive mentoring and support. Compared to the traditional model in Germany, we have so-called thesis committees. This means that uh, the PhD students do not only talk to their primary advisor, but they have a whole committee of uh, several processes or postdocs. Interdisciplinarity is very important for us because these highly complex systems cannot be understood from one single perspective. Of course, the core is the computer science aspect, but we are here in close collaboration with people from material sciences, from electrical engineering or from physics. Furthermore, we have research seminars on a regular basis. That's where the PhD students can present their own work, but also listen to talks from external guests and especially these presentation skills are very important. At some point they will have to go to international conferences and present their work. The main topic are technical systems in general and all the aspects from initial specification of these systems down to the real implementation, how they are assembled, how they are Build. We find technical systems nowadays everywhere, starting from cell phones, but also in coffee machines or in cars. One example is the power consumption of technical systems. Everybody knows the problem that the cell phone has an empty battery if you need it. And this is due to the processors that are inside these cell phones, which need a lot of energy because they get more and more powerful. We have to switch to new paradigms, which could be, for example, reversible logics and one of our PhD students is investigating on these reversible logics. In conventional computers, many non-reversible operations are used, which means information is lost in the process. According to Landauer's principle, the loss of information causes heat dissipation. This can only be avoided by using new technologies which work completely reversible. The focus of my research is on reversible logic which provides the basis for these new technologies. The goal is to get an understanding for the PhD students of the entire system design flow from the specification down to the realization with a special emphasis on robustness and correctness. In my work, I am dealing with semantic object recognition from 3D point clouds for mobile robots. 
That means I am developing a new algorithm through which the robot will be able to recognize object in human environment and perform the complex tasks. Such a robot can then be used to support us humans in our everyday life. But the area of semantic perception is very challenging because the robot must deal with uncertainties and ambiguities which may occur. Moreover, the robot must be able to act reasonable even if the parts of the information are missing. The students in the school do not have to teach, but many of them want to teach because it's very important for them to have a close collaboration with the students. Uh, they are involved in students' projects. Besides researching for my PhD, I supervise uh, student projects for bachelor and master students in the Department of Computer Science. These projects last one year and are part of the main course of computer science. The current project covers search spaces for games. Of course, we see this as uh, another skill they get and so we appreciate that a lot.